Charles Ryder is not a special person. He's a normal, competent rider. Plus. Plus what? Plus the last word in precise control. The key word in Charles riding is control. It's only common sense. Different hazards mean you must exercise that control in different ways. This is where know-how comes in. And even the know-how is only horse sense. Common sense and control, that's all. And you'll be home and dry. Control begins with the machine and the man. They'll be together soon enough. We'll start with them separately. First, the machine. The choice of machine is a personal matter, but the things to bear in mind are common to all. The engine must be in first-class condition. All adjustments such as contact breaker gap, plug point settings, carburetor settings, and tappet settings want to be spot on so that the engine will give immediate response and will have a really fine plonk. Make sure your clutch takes up really smoothly. Change should be correctly adjusted. This should be done exactly as per maker's book, for they have a hard job in front of them. See that your brakes are perfect. They should both work freely and not bind. Now for the controls themselves. Every cable must work smoothly and freely. The twist grip should work smoothly but not shut itself off. This is going to be your most important control. Again, the stiffness of the ignition control should come from the adjustment of the lever. And place it exactly to suit your own thumb. The valve lifter should be precise in movement and well positioned. You're going to need some very dainty clutch work, which you can't do with the tips of your fingers. Make sure your hold allows you to reach the lever with the knuckles. This goes for the front brake, too. If, however, you can't get a comfortable hold and reach the lever properly, then here is one simple solution. A rear chain link. You'll fit the rest of it naturally. The foot brake should work smoothly, of course, but make sure it's also set so that it can be operated smoothly. You shouldn't have to lift your foot. Merely rotate it round the rest, as you'll often have to use the brake standing up. Now, riding position. The bars should allow you ample leverage with a comfortable reach and a natural set for your wrists. Not at an awkward angle, but like this. It's worth a bit of experimenting. Experiment as well with the position of saddle and rest to get a good natural grip on the tank with a comfortable rise and fall to the saddle. Your legs are your best suspension units and you'll use them a lot. So make it easy for yourself. Now for protection. All machines need some, if only a crankcase shield. But it depends on the type of machine and how you personally feel about it. It's elementary to make certain that water can't get where it's not wanted. But you must make up your own mind whether protection or accessibility helps your morale most. Just a word about riding kit. Good stout leather boots will keep the water out, whereas rubber boots soon let in rocks and foot vests and things. Suits are a personal matter, but make sure yours is waterproof. Otherwise, when you're sitting in water, depression will set in very rapidly. But do get a suit that can breathe, or you'll be doing the course in a Turkish bath of your own sweat. Most of us wear a neck towel. Half a baby's terry napkin, designed as it is for absorbing moisture, does the job very well. The other half is a useful dry spare. Good safety glass goggles, I find, are cheapest in the long run, as plastic ones scratch too soon with frequent cleaning. Good flexible leather gloves are preferable to flimsy chamois. And if it's really filthy, I've got a pair of over mitts. All that can be said about equipment is, it should be adequate. What's adequate? It depends on you. I carry a plug and a plug spanner, some chain spares and a rivet extractor, a decent screwdriver, a tire lever and a gauge, a spare in a tube, a 
few spanners. Oh, and some anti-misting tissues for my goggles. It sounds a lot, but it folds up small. Some people take along a young workshop. It depends on how you feel. And where do you keep them? I don't use a toolbox. It takes time to open. But I do put them where I'm not likely to fall on them. Well, you don't want to damage them, do you? We've dealt with the machine. There's not much wrong there. We're certainly well dressed for the job and we've got all the essential tools. John Coveney looks like a trials rider anyway. And that's at least 2% of the battle. Now for the other 98. an expert, Gordon Jackson, with the machine under perfect control all the time. It's quite obvious that John Coven must get down to basic principles. Follow my leader is a good method of learning, and here Gordon is leading John, steering the machine chiefly by the handlebars. John is more or less upright, legs slightly bent, and he's concentrating on the surface well in front of the front wheel. Another method of guiding the machine is by swaying the body, when you literally push the machine round each corner. trying the same method, but without the same degree of control because his knees aren't gripping the tank. Let's begin on an elementary hazard, an easy slippery slope, but there's a right and wrong way of doing it. Full throttle, bottom gear, hard tires equals wheel spin. It'll lead to his downfall. Gordon, soft tire, second gear, and intelligent use of the throttle prevent the wheel from spinning. Has John learned the lesson? Yes. Ruts are favored by trials organizers. This one is dry. The problem is one of balance and keeping on line. Here comes John. Well, he managed to keep on line, but only at the expense of losing his balance. How does Gordon do it? He puts his front wheel in the slot immediately corrects the machine's instability by his own body movement. Now for John again. is the same problem of keeping the front wheel in the slot and balancing the machine, only it's harder because it's slippery. There's the added bogey of wheel spin. Watch Gordon. for John again.
approach seems a bit too cautious. Yes, it was. Not a bad effort, though. Now let's see how John manages a steep slope. For a start, he's approaching much too cautiously. He'll never make it. But having failed, his biggest mistake was to lift his clutch. Gordon is going to show us that there's a right way to deal with the situation after you've failed. Don't touch the clutch, peg it down with the foot rest, and deal with the situation at your leisure. himself and his machine quite unnecessarily and no control at all. Let's get Gordon to do it properly. Here's John again. He's only been shown four times. Now to go down. Hold it. How wrong can you get? Back wheel locked. Clutch lifted, no front brake, and the look of terror isn't strictly necessary. It's fortunate it's a safe place as he's completely out of control. Now, what did I tell you? You should come down on the front brake and the valve lifter. Now for Gordon. Watch this study of perfect control. turn should present no trouble. Here's a clue as to why John is in difficulty. Gordon's turn now. Here's the answer. Use all the favorable banking you can get. This is not just adverse camber, but slippery too. descent, allowing precise placing of his wheels and great delicacy of throttle control together make the next ascent possible. Descents, cambers, and sharp turns. All his lessons have gone in one ear and out the other. This 
listen to Gordon's throttle control and notice the precise placing of his wheels. something quite different. A rock step. Oh, a caution is again John's downfall. It's really quite simple. The front wheel's lifted by opening the throttle to make the crankcase clear the step. Look how the back tire's taking all the weight. Then closing the throttle brings the wheel down and checks wheel spin as the back wheel scrabbles its way over. stony path is liked by trials organizers because it sets a nice problem in throttle control, balance and navigation. The secret is in complete control all the time so as to choose an exact path, avoiding as many of the obstacles as you possibly can. You do it by discreet use of the throttle. reduces the avoiding action he has to take, but he's always in complete control. section must be treated on its merits. John is trying to pick the precise path that stood him in good stead before. It's clearly done him no good on little rocks. Watch Gordon. is a confident straight path through loose rocks. John has a go once more. And a very good copy of the expert indeed for a different kind of hazard. There, he's drowned his engine. So that's not the way. It's maddeningly easy when you know how. 